So now we come to uh, Act 4, Scene 2. Um, Othello's with Amelia, and he's questioning her about uh, the discourse between Cassio and Desdemona. Othello says, You have seen nothing then, Amelia, nor ever heard, nor ever did suspect. Yes, you have seen Cassio and she together. Amelia says, But then I saw no harm, and then I heard each syllable that breath made up between them. What? Did they never whisper? Never, my lord. Nor send you out of the way? Never. To fetch her fan, her gloves, her mask, nor nothing? Never, my lord. That's strange. Amelia says, I durst, my lord, to wager she is honest. Lay down my soul at stake. If you think other, remove your thought. It doth abuse your bosom. If any wretch had put this in your head, let heaven requite it with the serpent's curse. Uh, that was the curse that um, God laid upon the servant in Genesis, who uh, deceived Eve. For if she be not honest, chaste, and true, there's no man happy. The purest of their wives is foul as slander. Thela says, bid her come hither, go. She says enough, yet she's a simple board that cannot say as much. This is a subtle whore, a closet, lock and key of villainous secrets, and yet she'll kneel and pray, I've seen her do it. Enter uh, Desdemona and Amelia. Desdemona says, My lord, what is your will? Pray you, Chuck, come hither. What is your pleasure? Let me see your eyes. Look into my face. Desdemona said, What horrible fancy is this? And then Othello says to Amelia, Some of your function, mistress. Leave procreants alone and shut the door. Uh, procreants is um, lovers, as in procreation. Cough or cry hem if anyone comes. Your mystery, your mystery, nay dispatch. Desdemona says, Upon my knees, what doth your speech import? I understand a fury in your words, but not the words. Why, what art thou? Your wife, my lord, your true and loyal wife. Come, swear it. Damn thyself, lest, being like one of heaven, the devils themselves should fear to seize thee. Therefore be double damned. Swear thou art honest. Heaven doth truly know it. Heaven truly knows that thou art false as hell. To whom, my lord? With whom? How am I false? Othello says, weeping, Ah, Desdemon, away, away, away. Desdemona says, Alas, the heavy day, why do you weep? Am I the motive of these tears, my lord? If haply you, my father, disrespect an instrument of this you're calling back, lay not your blame on me. If you have lost him, I have lost him too. Thelo says, Had it pleased God to try me with affliction, had he rained all kind of sores and shames on my bare head, steeped me in poverty to the very lips, given to captivity me and my utmost hopes, I should have found in some place of my soul a drop of patience. But alas, to make me the fixed figure for the time of scorn, to point his slow and moving finger at. Yet could I bear that too very, very well. Well, very well. But there where I have garnered up my heart, where either I must live or bear no life, the fountain from the which my current runs or else dries up to be discarded thence, or keep it as a cistern for foul toads to not engender in. Turn thy complexion here, patience, thou young and rose-lipped cherubin. Aye, look, here look grim as hell. Desdemona says, I hope my noble lord esteem me, esteems me honest. O oh, I, as summer flies are in the shambles, uh, slaughterhouse, that quicken even with blowing, O oh, thou weed who art lovely, so who art so lovely fair and smell so sweet, that the senses ache at thee, would thou hadst ne'er been born. Desdemona asks, um, Alas, what ignorant sin have I committed? Thelos says, was this fair paper, this most godly book, made to write whore upon? What committed? Committed. O oh, thou public commoner, I should make very forges of my cheeks that would to cinders burn up modesty. I but speak my deeds. What committed? Heaven stops thy nose at the no Heaven stops the nose at it, and the moon winks. The bawdy wind that, that kisses all it meets is hushed within the hollow mine of earth, and will not hear it. What committed? Desdemona says, by heaven you do me wrong. I not you a strumpet? No, as I am a Christian, if to preserve this vessel for my lord, 
from any other foul unlawful touch, be not a strumpet, I am none. What? Not a whore? No, as I shall be saved, is it possible? O oh, heaven, forgive us. I cry you mercy then. I took you for that cunning whore of Venice that married with Othello. You, mistress, that have the office opposite to St. Peter and keep the gates of hell. <coughs> Amelia says, you, you, are you. We've done our course. That's money for your pains. I pray you turn the key and keep our counsel. Amelia says, alas, what does this gentleman conceive? How do you, madam? How do you, my good lady? Faith, half asleep. Good madam, good madam. What the matter with my lord? With who? Why, with your my lord, madam. Who is thy lord? He that is yours, sweet lady. I have none. Do not talk to me, Amelia. I cannot weep, nor answers have I none, but, we should, but what should go by water. Prithee tonight, lay on my bed my bed, wedding sheets, remember, and call thy husband hither. Here's a change indeed, and she exits. I have none. Do not speak to me, Amelia. I cannot weep, nor answers have I none, but what should go by water um, appear in tears. Prithee tonight, lay on my bed my wedding sheets, remember, and call thy husband hither. Here's a change indeed, and she exits. Desdemona says, Tis meet I should be used so, very meet. How have, how have I been behaved that he may stick the smallest opinion on my least misuse? Enter Iago and Amelia. What is your pleasure, madam? How is it with you? Desdemona says, I cannot tell. Those that do teach young babes do it with gentle means and easy tasks. He might have chid me so, for in faith I am a child to chide him. Iago says, What is the matter, lady? Amelia says, Alas, Iago, my lord hath so behoard her, uh, called her a whore, throwing such despite and heavy terms on her that true hearts cannot bear it. Desdemona said, And now am I that a eh, am I that name, Iago? What name, fair lady? Such as she said, my lord, did I say I was? Amelia says, he called her whore. A beggar in his drink could not have laid such terms upon his callet, um, whore. Why did he so? I do not know. I am sure I am none such. Do not weep, do not weep, alas the day. Amelia says, has she forsook so many noble matches, her father and her country and her friends to be called whore? Would it not make one weep? It is my wretched fortune. Beshrew him for it. How comes this trick upon him? Nay, heaven doth know. Amelia says, I'll be hanged if some eternal villain, some busy and insinuating rogue, some cogging, cozening slave, to get some office, have not devised this slander. I'll be hanged else. Iago says, Fire, there is no such man. It is impossible. Desdemona says, If any such there be, heaven pardon him. Amelia says, a halter pardon him, and he'll gnaw his bones. Why should he call her whore? What keeps her company? What place, what time, what form, what likelihood? The moors abused by some villainous knave, some base notorious knave, some scurvy fellow. O oh, heaven, that such companions thou didst unfold and put in every honest hand a whip to lash the rascals, naked through the world, even from the east to the west. So, Amelia... Um, is on to Iago. She doesn't know that he's the one that's been sprouting all these um, false falsities um, to Othello, but she she understands that someone has. Speak within door. More softly. 
O oh, fie upon them, some such squire he was that turned your wit the seamy side without, and made you suspect me with the more. You are a fool, go to. O oh, God, Iago, what shall I do to win my lord again? Good friend, go to him, for by this light of heaven I know not how I lost him, and she kneels. Here I kneel, if e'er my will did trespass against his love, either in discourse of thought or actual deed, or that mine eyes, mine ears, or any sense, delighted them in any other form, or that I do not yet, and ever did, and ever will, though he do shake me off to beggarly divorcement, love him dearly, com comfort persuade me. Unkindness may do much, and his unkindness may defeat my life, but never taint my love. She rises. I cannot say whore, it does abhor me now. I speak the word that's very clever, whore and abhor. To do the act that might the addition earn. Not the world's massive vanity could make me. Iago says, I pray you, be content, tis but his humour. The business of the state doth, does him offence, and he does chide with you. So he's saying that um, it's affairs of state that are causing him to uh, say these things. If to no other, it is but so, I warrant. Hark how these instruments summon you to supper. The messengers of Venice stays the meat. Go in and weep not, all things should be well. And then Desdemona and Amelia exit, and in comes Roderigo, who you would recall wants Desdemona for himself. How now, Roderigo? I do not find that thou dealst justly with me. What, on the contrary? Every day thou dafts me with some device, Iago, and rather, as it seems to me now, keeps from me all conveniency than supplies me with the least advantage of hope. I will indeed no longer endure it, nor am I yet persuaded to put up in peace what already I have foolishly suffered. Will you hear me, Roderigo? Faith, I've heard too much, for your words and performances are no kin dearder. So, Roderigo's been getting nowhere, and he's starting to get a little bit impatient with Iago. With naught but truth, I have wasted myself out of my means. The jewels you have had from me to deliver Desdemona would half have corrupted a votarist, uh, a nun. You have told me she hath received them, and returned me expectations and comforts of sudden respect and acquaintance, but I find none. Well, go to, very well. I'll be patient. Very well, go to. I cannot go to, man. Not is not very well. Nay, I think it is scurvy and begin to find myself fopped in it. Uh, made a fool. Very well. I tell you, tis not very well. I will make myself known to Desdemona. If she will return me my jewels, I will give over my suit and repent my lawful solicitation. If not, assure yourself I will seek satisfaction of you. Iago says, oh, you have said now. You finished. I and said nothing but what I protest in ten minutes of doing. Why now I see there's metal in thee, and even from this instant do build on thee a better opinion than ever before. Give me thy hand, Roderigo, thou hast taken against me a word just exception, and yet I protest I have dealt most directly in thy affair. It had not appeared. I grant indeed it hath not appeared, and your suspicion is not without wit and judgment. But Roderigo, if thou hast that in thee indeed, which I have greater reason to believe now than ever, I mean purpose, courage, and valour, this night show it. If thou the next night following, enjoy not Desdemona, take me from this world with treachery and devise engines for my life. Uh, plots. Um, so if um, he can't get Desdemona by the following night to, um, to uh, get rid of, uh, or to do harm to Iago. Well, what is it? Is it within reason and compass? Iago says, Sir, there is a special commission comes from Venice to depute Cassio in Othello's place. Is that true? Why then Othello and Desdemona return again to Venice? Oh no, he goes into Mauritania and takes away with him the fair Desdemona, unless his abode be lingered here by some accident, wherein none can be so determinate as the removing of Cassio. So um, he's trying to get Roderigo to get rid of Cassio. How do you mean removing of him? Why, making him incapable of Othello's place, knocking out his brains. And that you would have me do. And Iago says, Aye, if you dare do yourself a prophet and a right, he sups tonight with a harlotry, and thither will I go to him. He knows not yet of his honourable fortune. If you will watch his going thence, which I will fashion to fall out between twelve and one, you may take him at your pleasure. I will be near to second your attempt, and he shall fall between us. Come, stand not amazed at it, but go along with me. I will show you such a necessity in his death, that you shall think yourself bound to put it on him. 
It is now high supper time, and the night grows to waste. About it. Rodrigo said, I will hear further reason for this, Iago, and you shall be satisfied. So, um, Othello's been rather harsh to Desdemona. Desdemona uh, is trying to work out how to get back in his favour. She doesn't know why he's calling her a whore. And you've got Rodrigo coming back in, and he and Iago are going to do away with Cassio. Whom Othello also wants done away with as well. So uh, the plot thickens. Join me for um, Act 4, Scene 3.